We're on page 1126 of Algebra 2, looking at pages 11 through 13. This should be review. Uh, I know we had this back in uh, pre-algebra, Algebra 1, even did a little bit in geometry. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about how to graph a line. On page 8, <clears throat> they're having you take an equation, plug in some values that you make up for x, and then solve the equation to find the corresponding y values. And then each of those pairs of numbers becomes a point that you can put on the graph and connect them with a line, all right? So I would suggest always, always, always plugging in zero for x, okay, that makes it easy. And then plug in some other numbers that are close to that. So like one, two, maybe negative one, negative two, if you have to do this with a fraction, um, I'm looking to see if they give you any fractions, then you would want to do the denominator, but I don't see any like that. When you get to page 10, uh, C will be interesting, all right? Because they give you the value for Y, and then you square that, and uh, that is the value for X. And then you are going to graph those points, okay? Now, you're not done then because on that page they want you to apply the test that they were talking about earlier to determine whether that particular relation, uh, that graph, is indeed a function. So I think with graphs the best way to do it, as it talks about here, is what's called the vertical line test. If, it only, if a vertical line would only cross the graph in one point, then it is a function. If it would cross in two points, then it is not a function, right? Let's go on to um, page 11. And it's talking about slope again. <clears throat> and again, this is review, but the slope we use the letter M to represent. And uh, we can say that it's the change in Y over the change in X. And these are coming from the from two points. So maybe one of the points, you have the x, y value, so we'd call that the x1, y1 for the first point. The second point, the x value is the x2, and the second number is the y value, so that's the y2, or the x and y values of the second point, x and y values from the first point. When you subtract them, you will get a fraction, okay? And that is your slope. Another method that it talks about here, which is actually a shortcut, um, it's pretty cool, it's pretty easy. You have to have the equation in this form first, ax, in other words, it could have a coefficient, some number in front of x, plus by equals c. So the a and the b would be a number or a fraction, could just be one, okay? And then if there's any other number left over, you take that to the other side and that's c. The slope, happens to be negative, the opposite of whatever the A coefficient is divided by the B coefficient. Okay, and we could easily prove why that's so, but let's, let's just for the sake of time use this shortcut. <clears throat> Several of the problems they give you where they want you to use that shortcut on page 12. And um, it's real easy, okay? If they give you two points, we have to use this. If they give you an equation, we could find the slope by using this method. <clears throat> so looking at this particular problem, which you're gonna have to do for your um, homework on page 12, I think it's number five. Notice it's not in this form, is it? Okay, so we need to bring the three X over. So we'll have three X plus, I'm gonna just stick the one in there. Okay, 3x plus 1y equals 2. Ah, now it's in this form. Okay, so that's important. Then we take the a value over the y coefficient. I shouldn't say x value, the, yeah, the a value. So 3 over 1, and then we put the negative in front of it. Okay, so you can finish that one easily. This one looks tricky. This isn't too bad. We have two fractions. So we'll take the a value over the y value, and we're going to do the opposite of that. Well, this means I'm going to take the top one and multiply by the reciprocal. Remember that? When we divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, 
And I'm going to let you finish this because you're going to see that that cancels. This negative and this negative are going to cancel each other out as well. Okay? So I'll let you finish that one. Maybe a lot of times students get stuck on just the fractions. They forget the rules of how to do fractions. So here's a quick review on that. And um, then real quick on page 13, there's an equation at the top called the point-slope equation. Below that, the slope-intercept equation. And uh, depending on what information they give you, they want you to plug in to one of those equations and then come up with the equation of the line. They call it the equation of a relation. It's just the equation of a line um, in this form. I believe is the, the form that they want it to be in. All right. I think you should be able to do that. And again, thankfully, in the answer key, they do have a lot of the steps involved. They show how they get to the answer. So it's kind of like a solution manual. So that will help. And then we'll be back for the linear inequalities.